taking that poll and who they're asking because you can ask people that's, that maybe go to church but they may not be Christians. Right. But we'll, we'll use that statistic tonight anyway. But, you know, 50% of, of marriages, you know, in, in the Christian community, in our churches, end up in divorce. And it's because we don't understand kingdom relationship. So we're going to talk about it. Look at somebody say kingdom. Kingdom. So as I go, as we go move on to the first screen, we want to kind of give you some, some, some nuggets here that we're going to be talking about. Uh, and the first one we want to talk about is the first relationship existed before the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. The first relationship, when we talk about relationship and we're talking about the blueprint of kingdom relationships, the first relationship began, you know, before the foundation of the world. Before the foundation, we're, we're talking, before man, there was a relationship. Amen. Before man even existed, there was a relationship in heaven. Mm -hmm. And relationship also with, with man was God's plan from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. God had a plan. His plan was to have a relationship with us. Yeah. That was his plan from the very beginning. And God has a standard. Look at somebody and say standard. A that's what we're going to be talking about. God has a standard when it comes to relationship, whether it's a marriage. What are we talking about? Marriage. What are you talking about? Dating. What are you talking about? Just brothers and sisters in Christ. What are you talking about? How you treat your mother, how you treat your children. It's all about relationship. And God has standards, but those standards are found in the blueprint. Yes. In the blueprint. Because yes. God is, is, is the initiator. Mm -hmm. He is the expert. God is the expert tonight. I'm not the expert. You're not the expert. God is the expert tonight. So that's what we're going to be talking about when we talk about relationship. And the first thing needed in a successful relationship is the presence of God. Let's say the presence of God. It's the presence of God. Say, so how do you know, Pastor? Let's go to the very beginning. We're talking about a blueprint, right? And the blueprint is, is, is a plan. It's, it's a plan or model of something. Mm -hmm. So in the very beginning, God created Adam and Eve, but he created Adam first. Mm -hmm. And before God created Eve, Adam was in the presence of God. Mm -hmm. So God had a plan to bring Adam before his presence, even before he created Eve. Mm -hmm. Amen? So it is God's plan and relationships that we be in the presence of God, in the presence of God. And, and, and what I'll be talking about tonight as we, my wife will talk about these kingdom principles is, is kingdom principles. Principles, these are principles to be applied. Mm -hmm. These are principles to be applied to our, to, to our life. And being in the presence of God, Adam being in the presence of God, it teaches us a lot. You know, I say this to any, any, any single person. When, you, when you're choosing somebody as a Christian, when you're choosing somebody to date, you choose a man who's in the presence of God mm -hmm. or who's been in the presence of God or who is mm -hmm. in the presence of God. In other words, what am I saying? I'm saying a godly man. You want a godly man in your life because a godly man would know and learn how to treat you as a husband. Mm -hmm. And that's what relationship is all about. Mm -hmm. And also, God gave the blueprint or the plan on relationships and marriage. It was God who gave us this plan mm -hmm. of the blueprint. And we're going to be talking about that. And it's a dangerous thing. I want to give you this note. It's a dangerous thing to build without a blueprint. Right. If you have a house that you want, you have a house you're trying to build just like you want it. Mm -hmm. And the contractor said, well, we're going to build this house that you want. But we're not, we don't need a blueprint. We don't need a blueprint. We're going to just build this house. When you move into that house, I guarantee you it's not going to be what you wanted. Right. Why? Because they didn't follow what? The blueprint. The blueprint. Mm -hmm. Have you ever tried to put together uh, something that you buy something? Or I tried to put up a ceiling fan one time, and I, I put up several <laughs> ceiling fans before. So I, I, you know, I thought I had this thing all together. So I didn't follow the blueprint. I said, this is so simple. I don't need the blueprint. Well, I got up there on the ladder, got it all up there, and the thing didn't work. <laughs> I missed one level or one instruction. And because I missed that instruction, nothing worked. Mm -hmm. So I had to take it all the way back mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. So when we don't follow the blueprint and relationships, guess what? We have to turn it all the way back down and start over because yeah. the blueprint is the foundation for every relationship. Mm -hmm. And that blueprint is the word of God. Amen. That blueprint is God. So that's what we're going to be talking about, about tonight. And when we don't build relationships on that solid foundation, 
it's not going to last. In other words, you can't build a brick house with straws. You know mm -hmm. what I mean by that? Exactly. We're trying exactly. to build a brick house, and that's why they, the divorce rate is so high because we're trying to build something big, and we're trying to build a brick house, but we're using straws. We're not using mm -hmm. the blueprint. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we'll be talking about tonight. And this is not just for America, but this is for everybody. Amen. And this is also in our relationship to one another because we're going to be dealing with, uh, not all night, but very shortly, briefly, we're going to be dealing with our relationship with God first and then our relationship with one another. Mm -hmm. Because if our relationship with God is right, then our relationship with one another is going, going to be right. Exactly. Amen? Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's move on here. Let's move on here. So we want to just uh, talk about just a little more. The first scripture I want to give tonight, and we won't give too many scriptures, but the first scripture I want to give tonight is in the very beginning. I want to go to the book of, book of, uh, of Genesis. I don't know if you can read that or not, but I want to go to the book of, book of Genesis, the first chapter, and I get my wife to read that scripture for us. But this is the basics of what we're going to be talking about tonight. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle and over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that move upon the earth. Yes. Yeah, so we go back here and we look at the Bible says that God created man what? In his what? Image. image. Mm -hmm. Man, in other words, when he created the original man, man was, was, was like God. He wasn't right. God, but right. he, but he had, the, had similarities of God. Right. He represents God. Mm -hmm. When he built Adam, when he designed Adam, Adam was designed to represent God. Right. Adam and Eve was designed to represent God, just like our relationships with one mm -hmm. another. Whether we're married, whether, 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 you, whether you're dating, whether, you, whether it's a brother or sister in Christ relationship, mm -hmm. all of our relationships were designed by God to represent God. Mm -hmm. So if my marriage is not representing God, then that means I, I'm not following the blueprint mm -hmm. because Adam had to represent God. That's why God said I made man in the image, in mm -hmm. my image, in my likeness, right. in my image, because man is to represent me. So our job, our, our goal in any relationship is for it to represent Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. if you see me and my wife, and, and, and we don't have a perfect, perfect marriage. I'll tell you that now. We don't. She's not perfect. <laughs> amen. She's not perfect. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, uh, maybe 2% of the time she's right, but, you know, but, but she's, a, she's a great woman of God. But we're not perfect perfect mm -hmm. but our relationship represents the uh, initiator the originator right. of the blueprint right. it's like that home being built mm -hmm. you know when you buy a new house you may find some things in that house that's not right you gotta yeah, work true. on just a little bit it won't exactly like you want it right. but the blueprint i mean the overall picture it represents what you want it right and that's the way relationships are with god mm -hmm. and that's why you know we have to make sure that that whenever we're in a relationship, we got to follow the blueprint. Exactly. You know, if you're dating, you got to follow the blueprint. You know, what does God say about relationship? Mm -hmm. You know, what does God say about relationship? So we have to, we have to follow, follow. So God, man was made in the image of God. Mm -hmm. The original man was designed to live forever. Adam, when he was first created, he was created to live forever. Right. I mean, I mean, no pain, no mm -hmm. suffering. Right. You know, before the fall of man, mm -hmm. God made man in his likeness. Yeah. You know why God made man in the image of God? Because God was looking for relationship. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're talking about, that vertical relationship with God. Mm -hmm. That is the first priority. If my relationship with God is not right, right. then I'm going to have a shaky relationship right. with you all. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have a shaky relationship with my wife. So I got to make sure, keep in mind, I'm talking about a what? A kingdom, kingdom. relationship. Right. There's a difference. It is based on kingdom principles. Mm -hmm. They are worldly principles. Mm -hmm. And that is a problem. And, 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 and as among Christians, we are, are Christians, but we apply worldly principles to our relationships. Mm -hmm. Amen? Worldly principles to our yeah. relationships. We have to apply kingdom principles. If we're going to have a kingdom relationship. Now, when I was out there before, before I got saved and before I got married, I was, I was worldly. I was looking for worldly relationships. But when I got, when I had received Christ in my life, right. 
I learned the kingdom principles that I have to apply. Mm -hmm. And that's why we've been married for 32 years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 32 years because right. I applied the kingdom principles. Right. Look at the kingdom principles is in the word of God. It's in the word of God. Amen. But first I had to get my relationship with Christ. Mm -hmm. But I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. Sometimes uh, she gets on my nerves. Sometimes I get on her nerves. There's times I have to tell her, look, you need to go pray. You need to get yourself together. And then there's times she tells me, look, you need to go pray and get yourself together. Amen? Because we're not perfect, but we're applying the kingdom principle. I know, okay, I'm not acting kingdom right now. Mm -hmm. So I got to go get myself together. Get myself together so I can, I can treat my wife and represent our marriage can represent right. God here on earth. We have too many Christian relationships that our relationship is not representing mm -hmm. God mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. Amen. If you're in a grocery store and you're arguing and you're yelling at one another, that's not representing the Father. Mm -hmm. Amen. You call each other names and all kind of stuff, that's not representing mm -hmm. the Father. Mm -hmm. You rolling your eyes and stuff <laughs> like that, that doesn't represent who? Mm -hmm. The Father. So I have to make sure that my relationship with, with Christ, my relationship with God, that mm -hmm. vertical relationship, right. if you don't remember anything else tonight, in order to have a successful relationship, I want you to think of the cross. Mm -hmm. Your relationship with Christ has to be the top priority. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. That's the top priority. Right. And then that relationship going this way, horizontal, mm -hmm. will fall into line. Mm -hmm. It will never fall into line right. unless I get it together while, vertically while. First. And it doesn't say that um, in here it talks about love and man was created in the image of God, which was to reflect his nature. And God's nature is love. When you think about it, love is kind. Love is gracious. Love is unselfish. Love looks out for others before themselves. And so when um, my husband and I were college students uh, on the campus of North Carolina Central University, um, I just remember this man, when he came into the presence at the cafeteria. Um, it was just something about him. He was with his other friends, but it was something just about his character. And the, the thing that I remember is that um, when we did begin communicating and talking and that type of thing, um, he was always a man of his word. If he said he was going to be here at a certain time, he was there at that certain time. If there was something that he said he was going to do, he was going to do. I didn't have to wonder where he was. I didn't have to wonder if he was with someone else. He was always a man of his word. And still even today is a man of his word. And then after that, I even began to see how he treated other people around him, other his, his friends, and then in particularly females. He was an eye in all of those female friends. They were friends that they were um, were in classes together and that type of thing, but he treated them with respect. And then the other thing that I realized is that with his mother, he always treated his mother with kindness and re with respect. And so women, when you begin to look at a man, you look at how he's treating his mother. Amen. If he's speaking down to his mother, if he's not even going and visiting her, he's not taking care of her, those type of things, guess what? He's going to do the same thing to you. Amen. So you want to make sure that you're looking at a man that is, knows how to take care of a woman, knows how to put a woman before himself, knows how to do those things that's going to uplift and encourage her, not bring her down. That's right. And, and, I, and that, that just reminds me that, you know, when you, this is to the single folks, we have, we have, we have a mixture here, diverse mm -hmm. here. You know, we talk about that, that, that vertical. I always remember that vertical is with God, that horizontal is one another. Mm -hmm. Whenever you, you selecting someone to even date, you know, we use that term loosely, but selecting someone you even uh, as a Christian fellowship with, okay? Mm -hmm. Then you look at what kind of relationship does that person have with the father right. who is the originator of relationships, mm -hmm. who is the experts of relationships. Right. Then you look at what kind of relationships does that person have horizontal, horizontally with their parents, mm -hmm. with other people, mm -hmm. with elderly people. Right. You look at right. all of that. You look right. at the vertical relationship. I'm giving you some nuggets. Look at somebody say, write it down. Write it down. I'm going <laughs> to save you some headaches. <laughs> save you some headaches. But you look at what kind of relationship that young man and that woman That's has right. with, first of all, with the Lord, That's the right. relationship with the Lord, That's and right. how kind of relationship did that person have with their parents? That's right. You around them and they, they negative and they are ugly with their parents, I'm telling you, don't go that way, don't go down that road because right. they're going to be ugly right. with you. Right. If you treat your mother bad, now mothers are somebody you don't treat bad. That, right. Those are fighting words there. You know, when I grew up, you, you, could, you could say anything about anybody, but don't talk about my mother. <laughs> you can talk about everybody else. And if somebody mistreats their mother, wow. I'm telling you, wow. run and run 
fast because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they're not going to treat you right. Gee. They're not going to treat you right. So you look at that vertical relationship. I'm giving you something to measure it by. Then you look at that horizontal relationship. Exactly. What kind of relationship they got horizontally exactly. and what kind of relationship do they have vertically with the Father. Exactly. Amen. Look at somebody say, if I don't have it all together, if I don't have it all together I'm going to work on it after tonight. I'm going to work on it after tonight. Because this relationship is going to work. <laughs> I, t I told my wife, I said, if we get murdered, this is it. I mean, I mean, <laughs> to death do us part. <laughs> to death do, unless you mess up, we're going we gonna to make it. Unless <laughs> you mess up, we're going to make it. We're going to make it. I'm going to make sure my relationship with God is right. And let me tell you this. It takes God. It does. To make a relationship work. We'll That's talk right. about that when we talk more That's about right. the horizontal relationship. Right. See, the vertical relationship with God, God gives us enabling power. But it takes, it takes a lot of work for that horizontal. Because, you know, there are some folks out here with some personalities. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you. You know, how do you make things work with folks with a, with a bad <laughs> personality? But anyway. Anyway. Elohim is, in the very beginning, the Bible said God created the heavens That's and earth. That's right. That's Elohim right. is plural, which... Represent, which means God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Plural. Mm -hmm. So there was a, 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 a harmonious working relationship before the creation of man. Right. God, he said, let us, mm -hmm. read the word. Let he us. said, let us make let man us. what? In our, our own image. image. Which right. means God, there was already a working relationship going on before even man was created. Mm -hmm. I mean, God, they didn't have a problem up in heaven. Right. It was man that brought the problem. Right. But if we, are, if we follow the blueprint, mm -hmm. we can make it, guys. Right. If you follow this blueprint, mm -hmm. I guarantee you, you, you will select somebody, you know, that you can make it with. Mm -hmm. There's nobody perfect out here. So if you're looking for the perfect person, I'm telling you right now, mm -hmm. just, 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 it's not out there. It's that not. person is not out there. Right. there. There is no perfect person. Right. Amen? There's no perfect person. Right. But anyway, relationship with God was established in heaven before the creation of man. Jesus' relationship with the Father is an example of what our relationship on earth should be. Mm -hmm. He had a relationship with the Father in heaven, and he had a relationship with the Father here on earth. When he came to earth, mm -hmm. he had a relationship with what? The mm -hmm. Father. Mm -hmm. He said, me and the Father are what? One. One. He had a relationship with the Father. So our relationship should reflect God. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm trying to say. Your relationship should reflect God. When I look at you and your relationship, not just with your spouse, but your relationship to one another as brothers and sisters. Right. Your relationship to your past, your relationship to your church leaders, mm -hmm. your relationship to your mom, your relationship to your siblings, your relationship to, to your family. Right. Our relationships should reflect God. Right. When people look at you and your relationship, they should see God. Right. Because that's how God designed it. Right. Amen. Not saying we're perfect, but that's how God designed it so that we will be a reflection of him on earth. It is unfortunate, I would say this, it is unfortunate that a lot of our relationships in the body of Christ, mm -hmm. a lot of our relationships does not reflect Christ. Amen. I've seen, I've seen couples arguing in church. <laughs> Amen. Arguing in church. It doesn't reflect who? Christ. Mm -hmm. It doesn't reflect Christ. Mm -hmm. So we have, we, we have a role to play, right. you know, in this, in this thing. And, I, and, our, and our role is to, is to represent Christ here on earth. Right. God created relationships to work in, in harmony. Yes. You know, he told Adam and Eve, God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and what? To multiply, multiply. and replenish the earth. Mm -hmm. He wanted that relationship to work in harmony. Right. And in order for it to work in harmony, we, get, we must apply the blueprint to our relationship. Exactly. Amen? Yeah. All right. So whenever y'all look, I'm talking to single people again, whenever you're looking for that spouse, you got to look at that relationship what? Vertically, and you got to look at that relationship what? Horizontal. Mm -hmm. Amen? You got to look at it that way. I want to talk about now covenant. I want to talk about God's covenant. Mm -hmm. And that God's covenant with man is a manifestation of his love, grace, and mercy. I want to go to that screen. God's covenant with man is a manifestation of his love, grace, and covenant. Covenant is an agreement between God and man. Mm -hmm. I want you to note this. God's purpose for covenant, and I give a little bit more information, with man is to bring commitment to a relationship. Exactly. The chief commitment in a covenant is love. Why did God, we always say we are covenant people, and we are. God always designed a covenant. He, he had a covenant with Adam before the fall of man. He had a covenant with Adam and Eve after the fall of man. He had a covenant with Abraham. Mm -hmm. he, had a, he has a covenant, and I could go on, he had a covenant with Noah, right. and then he has a covenant with us. We are under the New Testament. That is a covenant mm -hmm. that God has with us. Mm -hmm. Why did God create a covenant? Mm -hmm. We'll make it simple for you. Mm -hmm. Because God wanted commitment 
in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what he wanted. Commitment. I tell, I always tell people this, me and my wife, when we're mm -hmm. counseling uh, couples, I right. say, you know what? Love is not just a feeling. Right. Love is not just a feeling. That's right. But love is a commitment. commitment. Let me explain right. that. Because when you fall in love, I mean, that, all, that, all them stars and stuff, one day that's not going to be there. <laughs> when you wake up and those hair rollers are there and, <laughs> and, and the man got this, this uh, ugly robe on walking around the house. <laughs> but love is about a commitment. And that's what God wanted in a covenant. When he made covenant with man, he said in this vertical relationship, I'm making a covenant with man because I want a commitment. Right. In the New Testament, he said, and I, and I will put my, my law in their inward parts. That's right. He said, I will put it in their hearts. I will put my spirit in man because my desire is to have a relationship with man and to have a commitment because those in the Old Testament, they violated the covenant. Mm -hmm. But he said in the New Testament, I'm going to help them to enable them to keep my covenant right. by putting my law in their inward parts. That's right. Which is the spirit of God. Right. Why? Because he wanted commitment right. in a relationship. Yes. What does everybody want in a relationship? Commitment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Commitment. Love is more than a feeling. Right. Love is a com commitment. When I think of my wife, I mean, I, I, I have feelings for her, but there's some time when I wake up, I don't feel like I, I, I love her. But that's a feeling mm -hmm. that comes emotions. and go. Mm -hmm. It's called emotions. Mm -hmm. She may have got on my nerve a while, and I may have mm -hmm. gotten on her nerve. Mm -hmm. She don't feel like she loved me that day. But I'm not going to leave her. Why? Because right. love is a commitment. Yes. And if you don't understand the blue, go ahead. If you don't understand the blueprint of God, that's why so many people walk out on their spouses. That's why so many relationships don't work because people are not willing to commit. That's the first thing. If you come to me from other counties, the first thing I'm going to tell you, love is, love is more than a feeling. Right. You better understand that. I mean, that honeymoon, you're all in love and all this kind of stuff, that honeymoon going to be over at some point. Right. And, and, the, and real life settles in. Right. Right. That's when you need that commitment. Right. Commitment says, when my wife got on my nerve, I'm still going home to her. Right. Commitment says, when I'm at my worst behavior, she coming home to me. Commitment says somebody may look good, they may smell good, and they may say the right things at the right moment, but I'm committed. That's what love is. See, commitment will bring you home to your spouse. Commitment will make you faithful to the one you even dating until you get to that point of marriage. Commitment. Love is more than a feeling. You know, love is, don't tell me you love me and you're not faithful to me. No, because love is a commitment. Don't you bring me that story talking about I love you. I just know love should have brought you home. I heard that on TV, so I thought I'd use that. I heard that on TV, so I had to throw that one out there. Love should have brought you home because love is not a feeling. That emotions and that, and that, and that nature that, that, that you feeling when, when you're around that person, love would say no. Love would take you home. That's what covenant is, ladies and gentlemen. That vertical relationship with God is a covenant. And God always wanted a commitment from the people he loved. And he created us special so that we could love him back. He created all the animals. He created all the things in the six days. And at the end of the sixth day, he created man because he said that it was not complete until I create the creature that can love me back the way I want him to love me back. That's, right. That's what the vertical relationship is about. That's why you got to choose somebody what? who loves God. And God would teach them how what? to love you. Amen. Thank you. Want to say? Yes, I was going to say talk. the Bible talks about how can two walk together except for they agree. So if you have one person who loves the Lord and who's serving the Lord, and the other person isn't, it's going to be an imbalance there. And one is going to pull one the other way. Either either you're going to pull that person towards Christ, or either that person's going to pull you back towards the world. And so it's much easier when you're working together, when you both have the same um, the same thought, the same mm -hmm. commitment. And and I'm going to tell you, it's not always in the beginning that when we first started dating we weren't always both saved in the beginning in the beginning when we first started dating but because that we had given that commitment I had given my life to the Lord and I prayed for him and thank God Pastor Harold led him to the Lord amen he led him to the Lord because I was so. a mess <laughs> I thought I was a player what did they say from the Himalaya but God got a hold of me though <laughs> 
So I thought um, I was a player. You know, just said I thought I was. You a thought player. he would. Yeah, I thought I was a player. So, but um, God did not allow us to come together into marriage until there was a commitment on both of our parts. Both of us had given our life to the Lord, and then we were able to work together. Um, and so, so many times, you know, you think you're going to pull that person along, but if that person is not ready to commit to the Lord, there's nothing you can do except for pray for them. They're not going to change. It's going to have to be God that is going to have to change them. And then when the two of you are both serving the Lord, you're able to walk together in the commitment is bound together because you number one again what you said that vertical commitment that we both had for the Lord and then that um, vertical that horizontal co uh, commitment that's to right. one another yes that's right you know I want to go to the scripture in Genesis 2 24 I mean, and in the beginning I'm all I'm standing in the beginning because that's where it was started relationship mm -hmm. started in the beginning mm -hmm. God created it God is the expert in it right. he said therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh mm -hmm. you know God sometimes uses use the illustration of marriage to illustrate how our relationship should be with him as a father. Right. And he used this word here, leave. That means that that spouse has priority in your life. Right. Whenever you get married, that person takes priority in your life mm -hmm. over any other relationship that you, that you mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm. Any relationship. Now, always, and I, when, we, when we counsel people, just for, when the second thing I tell them, first of all, you got to have that, that vertical relationship with God. The second thing I tell them, that little black book that you had before you, know, you got engaged, Throw that black book away. And women, if you got a pink book, it's got to be thrown away. <laughs> Throw that black book and that pink book away. All them numbers you had of those old friends that you, you know, you call up, whatever. They call you and say, how you doing? No, you throw that book away. And I, and I would take it even a step further. Probably even change your number. Once you get in a serious relationship, just change your number so them old friends don't even have access to, to your number, all right? I mean, I mean, I, my wife, trust me, she can get my phone anytime. I can get her phone anytime because we have what, trust for one another. Right. Ain't no numbers in my phone that she doesn't approve of. And ain't no, there ain't no numbers in your phone that I don't approve of. I'm just checking. I'm just, I'm just checking. I'm just checking. I'm just checking, guy. I'm just checking. But... It's about, it's about trust. But he said cleave. Cleave, cleave. represents that commitment and loyalty that you have to one another. God wants us to be committed and loyal That's to right. him. And in relationships, we have to be committed to loyal to one another. Right. And when I talk about relationship, not just to my wife, but I got to be committed to loyal to, to God. Right. I got to be committed and loyal to the people that God has called me mm -hmm. to shepherd. Mm -hmm. I got to be committed and loyal to those who are my friends and those who I'm in contact with. Right. And then it says... And also, you shall be made one flesh. That talks about functioning as one unit. Mm -hmm. You know, and one of, one of the most difficult things I see in relationships today is, is especially in, 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 in the younger generations, it's hard, it's, it's very difficult for people to function together as one. Because mm -hmm. once you get married, you're no longer two, you're one. And you have to function together as one. It doesn't mean that you're going to agree on everything. We don't agree on everything. Right. Something we just table and we pray about. Well, okay, we, we're not coming to an agreement here. So we table and we, and we, and we pray about it, right. you know, and then we ask God for, to, for guidance mm -hmm. on, on, on what to do, right. you know. And then we, sometimes we just have to compromise with one another, mm -hmm. you know. And, I mean, sometimes I'm not correct. I'm not correct all the time. Y'all didn't know that, did you? I'm not, I'm not right all the time, you know. And sometimes I have to give in because she's right. But we have to function in a relationship that God, if we follow the blueprint, God would give us instructions right. on how to function together. You know, that's the most difficult thing in, in relationships today. People can't function together. Mm -hmm. You know, they love each other, but they can't, they can't function together. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody wants to give. Right. You know, we live in one of the most selfish generations, I think. In the time that we live in, mm -hmm. people are the most selfish that I've ever seen in, in a lifetime. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think it's the way society has, has shaped people. Mm -hmm. You know, society has shaped people thinking, and it's hard for people to function together. Yeah. But in a, in a successful relationship, we're going to do it God's way. If we're going to do it the way the blueprint says it to be done, mm -hmm. then we got to function together as, 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 as a couple. Amen? Amen. Right. Amen. Right. I'm going to move on a little fast because there's another area that we want to talk about, and um, it's going to be, we're going to talk about finances. Or I won't, but we'll bring someone up that's going to talk about finances in a few minutes because mm -hmm. finances is very important in any relationship. Mm -hmm. Finance is important in your marriage. Finance is important in your church. Finance is important in everything that you do. We got to talk about, talk about finances. So uh, the covenant, we were talking about covenant. Now we're going to talk about that horizontal relationship. Right. We talked about the vertical. Right. Jesus said this in Matthew 22, 37 and 39. Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. This saying a lot. Mm -hmm. With all thy heart, heart. With, with all, all thy soul, soul, and, and with, with all, all thy mind. mind. That's a lot, isn't it? That's mm -hmm. how we love God. He teaches right. how to love him. 
And then he said, that's the first and great commandment. Then he said, the second commandment is this. Thou shalt what? Love thy neighbor as thou love thy what? Thyself. And Jesus said it many times. He said, this is a new commandment that I, that I give unto you, that you love one another. Mm -hmm. Jesus said it. And that word love, when Jesus used it, is agape love. Right. It's an unconditional love right. that Jesus talks about. Mm -hmm. you know, but now Jesus was not just talking about our vertical relationship. Right. But now he's dealing with what? Our relationship with one another. Right. Looks at my saying, that's when it becomes a mess. <laughs> because we got different personalities. You know, we got different personalities. That's right. I was, she was more of a talker. Y'all didn't know that, but she is. She's more of a talker. I was more of a uh, introvert, I guess, and especially in the beginning. Mm -hmm. I didn't talk that much. Right. She talked all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, so we had to find a way to make our personality. She, and she was more outgoing. I was more laid back. Mm -hmm. So we had to find a way to make those personalities what? Work. work together because now we're dealing with that side of the cross that goes this way is those relationships that are vertical. So we mm -hmm. want to work. We've got to work on that for about five minutes and then we've got to talk about finances. <laughs> so let's go. Let's talk about the vertical relationship with one another. And yes. one of the things uh, we know what agape is. I'm not even going to get a definition of agape. Mm -hmm. Agape is that unconditional love right. that we have. It's unconditional. Unconditional means there's no conditions. In other words, I love you regardless. Right. Condition is I love you if, whenever there's an if in there, I love you if you cook for me every day. I love you if, you know, you do this for me every day. I love you if you bring in the money. But when the money stops, I don't love you no more. Mm. That's not agape love. Mm -mm. Agape love is unconditional love. I love you whether you do anything for me or not. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. God is agape. He loved us right. when we didn't even love ourselves. Right. Because the Bible said, while we were yet sinners, Christ did what? He died. he died for us. God commanded his love towards us. That's agape. God commanded his love towards us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to talk about uh, what love is. Mm -hmm. I want to get into what love is, yes. and then we're going to talk about that just a little bit. What love is. What love is. Love is defined. Love is greater than feeling and emotion. Mm -hmm. Love is a command, a decision, and a commitment, and a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. If you don't remember anything else, write this down. Love, love is greater than feelings and, and emotions. emotions. It goes beyond that. Love is a command. First of all, mm -hmm. we are commanded by God to love. It is a decision. Mm -hmm. You make a decision who mm -hmm. you want to love. Mm -hmm. So ladies, young ladies, and young men, you can't make nobody love you. That's right. I don't care if you bomb the world. If they don't want to love you, they will not love you. Right. Right. Well, go and look at somebody. You know that's right. Yeah, that's right. Because love is a decision. I have to make a decision to love you, and you have to make a decision to love me back. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. why that's what love is. Right. You know, love is caring for someone else more than, than yourself. Mm -hmm. That's what love is. You know, and we can, we can go on and on and talk about love. But let's talk about the vertical. We're going to go from vertical to horizontal, horizontal mm -hmm. to what Jesus talked about. Right. We're going to talk about communication just briefly here. Let's go talk about communication. All right. So what I want to do is I want to give out a few pieces of paper here. So at least three papers at each table. And then we're going to do an exercise, okay? Get you some there. And we're going to talk about communication. There's three. So just at each table, it'll probably be three. Um, and when we talk about communication, we know that 60 to 80 percent of communication has to deal with what we see, what we hear, what we experience. OK. And so what I want to do in this exercise is that um, three per table. So what you're going to do is each person at your table, there's only going to be three people out of your table that are going to participate in this exercise. OK. And so um, when I give you the instructions, I want you to follow the instructions. And then I'm going we're going to talk about this because I want you to tell me how do you feel about this? This is actually our communication exercise, okay? This is our communication exercise. And so those are some of you all that uh, are at the table. Um, don't help them, you know, don't help them. But it's only going to be three people at each table, so the rest of you all are going to be onlookers. You're going to look, okay? All right, so this is what you're going to do. Those of you all that have the piece of paper, you're going to close your eyes. You're going to pick up that piece of paper. Okay, when you pick up that piece of paper, I want you to fold that piece of paper in half, but you got to keep your eyes closed. 
Um, those of you all that are at the table, if you all will watch and make sure that they're keeping their eyes closed, all right, keep their eyes closed, okay? You're going to fold the piece of paper in half, and then you're going to tear off one of the corners, okay? No talking. No talking at all. Like quietness, and, and you understand why I'm doing this in a minute. No talking at all. So the person or the people that are at the table, you just watch them and make sure they're keeping their eyes closed, okay? All right, the next thing you're going to do, you're going to tear, you're going to um, fold the paper in half again. All right, you're folding the paper in half again. And then what you're going to do, you're going to tear another corner off. All right. All right, everybody has their eyes, the, the people at the table have their eyes closed, correct? All right. Fold it in half one more time. Okay. All right. Ah, is somebody telling somebody something? No cheating. Okay. <laughs> this about relationships. Right. No cheating. You're going to tear another corner off. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, if you're done, open your eyes. The people that are at the table, all right, the ones that have the piece of paper, open it all the way up. And I want you to look and see what your paper looks like. Does it look like the other person at your table? Does anybody have anything that looks similar? Anybody paper look the same? Anybody? Nobody at this table? Nobody at that table? Anybody paper look the same? Nobody paper at the table looks the same. Yours look the same? Let me see. Oh, y'all did excellent. Okay. Well, the reason why I did that is because I wanted you all to see that one-way communication, if you don't have both people talking and that person is not able to talk back and clarify and ask questions, then you're not going to be on the same page. Um, now, this was very unique because yours came out the same, so that's good. Y'all got something going on here, some ESP or something going on. But I wanted you all to do that because I wanted you to see that communication is about a two-way so it would have been more helpful if you would have been able to say, um, should I fold it the long way or should I fold it, you know, the shorter way? Um, if you could have asked me questions, correct? And so that's why I'm saying to you all that communication is very key and important and it involves two-way communication, not just one person talking all the time, okay? And so 60 to 80% of all of our communication, it does consist of our body language, it consists of our eye contact, it consists of what we hear, okay? And being able to clarify and ask questions back and forth. In Proverbs 18 and 21, it says that death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit of there. So what I'm saying to you is that you want to make sure that what you're speaking and what you're seeing is encouraging and giving life to the person that you are in contact with, not just at your um, home place, but even in your job. Because guess what? When you're looking for a mate, people are watching how you act on your job in your community, various places, on your college campuses, wherever you're at. So if you are a person that is always upset, you're a person that's always argumentative, if I'm looking for a mate, I wouldn't want a person that's like that. So that's why I say you have to be mindful and careful of who you choose, okay? The next slide we're going to talk about is communication is practicing the art of listening. Now you all saw where my husband did a lot of the talking and I listened. Well, I will tell you, probably for the first five years that we were, um, were dating, I talk so much. So that's probably why now I'm out of words and he has all the words to say, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but he was a very good listener. And that is one of the other things that drew me close to him as well because I was able to share some of the things that was going on in my life and he was a very, very good listener. So you want to make sure that in communication, you want to be a good listener and you also want to make sure you're watching what that person is saying, hear what they're saying before you respond. And that's what we find in James 1 and 19 that you want to be a person that's swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Last thing on communication, and then you'll be ready to go. You want to make sure that you're speaking words that edify and not tear down. 
Ephesians 4, 29 and 30 says, don't let corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but use that which is good and edifying, that it may minister grace to the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit where you are sealed until the day of redemption. So those of us that we say that we are believers and we name the name of Jesus Christ, why are we having such things to come out of our mouth? Things that are so profane and vile, um, we shouldn't. And things where we're tearing down other people, we shouldn't allow that to happen. And so if you've ever been at work, you have someone on your job. If you just say one little slip up, you know, it could have been one of those days where someone had a bad day and they just may say some word that's out of character. Someone will say to you and remind you, oh, are you supposed to be saying that? Are you supposed to be acting like that? The world watches and knows more so than the believers what you should be doing and what you should not be doing. And so that's why you want to make sure that there's no corrupt communication out of your life. I'm not saying that we're all perfect. Every now and then someone may slip of the tongue. It shouldn't be because the more that you are in tune with God, the more you allow the Holy Spirit to take control, those words won't come out of your mouth. So I just want to make sure that was a very brief overview when we talked about communication. Making sure that that person that you're with, you're edifying, you're lifting, you're building up. You're not using your words to tear someone down. Communication is very key and any relationship. Amen. So we, we're going to conclude with that because we want to move in and talk about finances. But to sum, it, to sum it all up, you know, we wanted to, if you don't get anything else, we talked about that vertical relationship with God and that horizontal relationship with one another. You know, you got to always maintain and pursue God with all of your heart, all of your soul, and with all of your mind. Amen. And if you want a close relationship with God, you say, Pastor, I want a close relationship with God, just see me after this, after this seminar and we'll, we'll talk to you. And then if any of you want to talk to us about that relationship, just see us, and we'll talk to you about that. Amen. Give God praise. Amen. Amen. Give God praise for that. I thank God for my wife. Yes. Uh, I joke a lot, but she's a, <laughs> she's a wonderful, wonderful, beautiful lady. Thank and, you. And uh, I just thank God for her. Thank you. Amen. And, if you uh, all could stand right now, because I just want to give you stretching room before we do the next part. Just stretch a little bit. Yes. Bend over a little bit. Stretch a little bit.